The United States' Middle East policy, its West Asia policy, is in shambles and is crumbling. Not only is Iran and Pakistan, the United States, have to keep their basically paws off of it. They have no ability to dictate anything that's going on here. And actually, they are probably quite scared that Iran was able to launch so many ballistic missiles in a long-range capacity as a show of force that, indeed, it has the ability to defend itself. But even Foreign Policy Magazine is talking about the U.S. Middle East policy has failed. The region is on fire and Washington is to blame. And I just wanted to show you this headline to then go into because this is just a flurry of developments now. Here is, oh, hold on one second. Uh, yes, there we go. Here is the latest development in the region. And this, again, has to do with Yemen and with Ansar Allah. So as the United States has absolutely no ability to dictate affairs with what's going on between Iran and Pakistan as they seek to maybe take care of matters that are heavily important to their own geostrategic interests in the region. Now you have reported by the Times of Israel, no less, okay? Here it is, Times of Israel, Times of Israel, saying that the India Indian Navy, and this, I guess, is coming from Reuters as well, Indian Navy rescues crew of Houthi-struck U.S. ship off the coast of Yemen. The warship sent to assist U.S. Genko Picardi recovers 22 on board, including nine Indian nationals, fire on vessel extinguished. So what did Ansar Allah say? Now they're on the U.S. terrorist group list, uh, I guess, again. Um which is not unironic at all. But what did they say on Tarala? They said, doesn't matter how many times you strike, because the United States has been conducting airstrikes on Yemen. You can bomb us, but we're not going to stop the blockade. And now they're showing, and now the Western mainstream media has to even report that the damage is actually, that there is damage <laughs> that's happening. So the Indian Navy said on Thursday, I rescued the crew of a U.S.-owned vessel in the Gulf of Aden, after an attack uh, by Yemeni's Houthi movement as tensions in the region, sea lanes disrupted global trade. Following the attack on the U.S. Genigo Picardi late on Wednesday, the U.S. military said its forces had conducted strikes on 14 Houthi missiles that presented an imminent threat to merchant vessels and U.S. Navy ships in the region. Attacks by the Iran allied, as they always say, Houthi militia on ships in and around the Red Sea since November had slowed between Asia and Europe and alarmed major powers in an escalation of the war between Israel and Palestinian group Hamas in the Gaza Strip. The Houthis say they are acting in solidarity with Palestinians and threatening to target U.S. ships in response to American and British airstrikes on the group's position. So here you have uh, <laughs> the Houthis. They said they, their missiles had made a direct hit on it. Iran said it had to divert the warship deployed in the region to rescue the 22 on board, including nine Indian nationals. The crew were all safe and the fire on board had been ex extinguished. But this is just showing again that the United States really has no capabilities. <laughs> Their capabilities have been extinguished along with that fire on that cargo ship because this is going to keep happening. And now you're seeing, despite the rosy forecast of a lot of economists, so economists have been saying, oh, well, if we can end this Red Sea row in a relatively short amount of time, then we can avoid the biggest consequences economically to what Ansar Allah is doing. Well, that's not happening. They're continuing. Uh, the stand that Yemen is taking is heroic. And even Joe Biden, here is Genocide Joe, even Genocide Joe had to admit, here he is on Sky News, that uh, the United States is essentially bombing and nothing is happening. And they don't even have a purpose or a reason to do this uh, beyond what they claim they're doing, which is trying to open up the Red Sea again, which is uh, not working. So here's what Genocide Joe had to say. Are the airstrikes in Yemen working? Well, when you say working, are they stopping the Houthis? No. Are they going to continue? Yes. So there you go. <laughs> are the strikes... Uh, uh, stopping the Houthis? No. Are they going to continue? Yes. 
That's all you need to know about the United States' Middle East policy, its policy in West Asia at this moment. You had, and you might have seen, uh, uh, Antony Blinken at Davos, what he said, and I'll play it for you right now. What he so said says everything. It essentially is an admission that uh, the United States just lies. It's an empire of lies. And when it tells the truth, it looks exactly like what it is, which is a paper tiger with no legitimacy, which is essentially casting a blaze in the region of West Asia in order to try to save its pet project, Israel. But now that pet project is looking like it is not only out of control, but actually it has assumed control of the leash and is pulling the United States in any direction it wants to go in. Now the region is on fire. You have intense, uh, more intense fighting on the Lebanese border. You have this intense row, the solidarity blockade by Ansarallah in Yemen. You have the Islamic resistance in Syria, in Iraq, hitting U.S. bases. You essentially have a powder keg that is getting closer and closer to blowing. And Joe Biden, all he has to say about it is. The strikes aren't going to stop even if they're not working. And here you have Mr. Blinken here. This was from uh, Judge Napolitano, his interview with Jeffrey Sachs. We won't go over the interview. It's, it's only a couple minutes long, but we'll just listen to what Anthony Blinken had to say here. OK, because I think it's important. Here we go. Among innocent men, women and children. Breaks my heart. He's talking about Gaza, innocent men, women and children dying breaks his heart. All right. The question is, what is to be done? We've made judgments about how we thought we could be most effective in trying to shape this in ways to get more humanitarian assistance to people, to get better protections and, and, and minimize civilian casualties. Um, and at every step along the way, not only have we impressed upon Israel its responsibilities to do that, um, we've seen some progress in areas where absent our engagement, I don't believe it would have happened. Um, what is Blinken talking about first? There he is with uh, Thomas Friedman, of course, the um, resident neocon at the New York Times. What a more vile figure to sit next to. I don't know who is worse, Blinken or Thomas Friedman. But Anthony Blinken here is a secretary of state, just lied through his teeth with absolutely no basis in fact. There's no basis in fact to what he said there. There's no basis in fact. Anthony Blinken just went up on a major forum and said that the United States has made progress in the Middle East around Gaza where if they had not been involved, then things would have been a lot worse. The United States was the is the principal backer of Israel. The United States is the reason why Israel can do what it does and is honestly the principal reason that Israel does what it does. It is fueled by the United States' support. Without it, this gruesome, uh, absolutely uh, uh, maniacal genocide could not be occurring right now mind you this is all happening he's saying this amid the fact that the united states everything it has done in this region has basically set the region on fire and this is a historical phenomenon this is historical this did not start with blinken but surely anthony blinken and the Biden administration are putting the deadly and disastrous cherry on top of an absolutely despicable, chaotic, and failed policy in the region. Such a failure that the whole point of chaos, the whole point of destruction in this region was to siphon off the resources. The region at this moment is split between the axis of resistance, which is sovereign and won't allow the resources of the region to be just stolen, versus those countries that are completely and utterly dismembered, destroyed, and put into a, <laughs> a vassal position that they can't even exploit their own resources so that the United States can exploit them. That's how poorly 
the United States has fared here. And it just goes to show, though, the hubris, the absolute vile arrogance that comes out of the mouths of these neocons that they actually do believe what they say and that they are willing to lie to our faces just to continue uh, this failed policy. But they also tell the truth. And Biden is telling the truth when he says that the strikes are going to keep happening on Yemen, even if they don't work. Blinken will tell you a lie. We're making progress in the Middle East, even when the United States is the reason why the Middle East is aflame. This is the cycle of imperial rot and decline. It is the wheels are turning. The rubber is burning. There is nothing left here but the end game. And that end game is a massive war. Let's make no mistake about it. What Israel is doing will not be allowed. This is escalating as we speak. That's why there are so many attacks on CENTCOM, the so-called Central Command of the United States in Iraq and Syria. That's why fighting is intensifying between Hezbollah and Israel. That's why Yemen is doing what it is doing. And that's why we're going to see continued conflict, airstrikes, escalations in this region until the situation in Gaza is uh, resolved, until people stop being massacred by U.S. and Israeli weapons, uh, logistics, and, and troops. <laughs> because let's be honest, if it weren't for U.S. logistical personnel, Israel wouldn't even be able to do what it is doing now, even though it is not faring too well as we speak. So until that's resolved, until the United States takes it, packs up its bags like it did with Afghanistan and does that to the rest of the region until it stops interfering in the affairs of countries in that region, we are going to see escalation. And that's only going to worsen in the days to come, in the weeks to come. But we can be confident now, unlike in prior periods, we can be confident and I say this with confidence, that the day that the United States no longer holds a major influence in this region, is no longer dictating affairs uh, in this region, they're coming. They're coming. What Ansar Allah is doing, what Iran is doing, what Syria is doing, what the resistance is doing everywhere, what Gaza is doing, what people there are doing, their resistance is showing that that day is coming. And the United States is very, very afraid. And they should be. Thank you for tuning in to my latest video. I appreciate all of your support. This channel, however, needs your help. I am seeking to make this channel more sustainable in the long term and upgrade necessary equipment to ensure that this work continues onward and makes progress to give you all of the geopolitical analysis that you all deserve. For that reason, I'm asking you to become a member of my Patreon community at patreon.com slash Danny Haifong. You can find that link in the video description or in the pinned comment below. For whatever amount you choose to give, just know you are supporting independent media that you can't find anywhere else. Thank you so much and I look forward to the next video.